Welcome to the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Hometown Ticketing is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection Podcast and to provide schools nationwide with the best options for digital ticketing for their events. Visit their website at hometownticketing.com to learn how they can make digital ticketing possible and simple at your school. Thank you to Hometown Ticketing for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. I'm your host, Mark Hutch Hunter. Today, our guest is Van Park, Certified Athletic Administrator at Bear River High School up in Tremont, Utah. Welcome to the show, Van. Thanks, Hutch. It's, it's really a pleasure. I've really enjoyed listening to a lot of the different people that have been on here. Well, that's great to hear. And let's have you begin by sharing where you grew up, where you went to college, your first jobs, all those type of things. Well, I, I grew up in a place called Oakley, Utah, up by Camas. And uh, South Summit High School, is that where South you went? South Summit High School. Yeah, my okay. green and white alma mater. And uh, back then, it was it was a lot of most of my life was other than sports was farming. They had a lot of dairy farms back then. Now it's pretty much big cabins and huge homes. And, and oh, yeah. uh, but back then there was a lot of hay and to haul and a lot of sprinkler pipes to move and, and cows to milk. And so that was a lot of my summertime and always loved it back then when uh, sports started, because that meant I could quit working so much but uh i loved where i grew up other than salt lake had green grass in in uh march and we'd have snow till after april but but i did oh, love sure. up growing up there and then uh served a mission then went to uh utah state and graduated from utah state and that's where i met my wife and and started my uh decision making to to definitely be a coach I always thought I'd want to be one and and my dad um was a coach in fact he was the first girls coach at South Summit for the first two years he did it for free and and uh then he tried to talk me out of it for not because he didn't think I could do it but he didn't want me to do, have some of the heartache that sometimes goes with that but he was so happy that when I still did do that and got my first teaching and coaching job right out of college up in Dayton, Idaho at Westside High School. I never even had heard of that place before. We were 180 students. I was um, amazed that you could see from one end of the school to the other and all the lockers were open with the coats hanging out and, and uh, really safe environment and had a great experience there for seven years. And then the job opened up at Bear River in 95 and uh, my wife was already teaching French here and so it really made it nice so that we did, I, we were living in Lewiston Cornish and I'd drive a half hour to Idaho and she'd drive 45 minutes over here so it, it was really okay. nice when this job opened up and I got I, I was able to coach here for for uh, 25 years. When did you become the athletic director then? Uh, back in 2007. And so for a quite a few years, I taught health half the day and coached boys basketball and, and was the athletic director. And then after 2009, it was getting too much. And so I stepped down from coaching. And after one year, they really needed a, a girls coach. And so they asked if I would please do it. And I jumped back in that for five years. And and then, as, as you know, the job continually got more and more and more until I finally had to, to uh, stop coaching the girls also. Let's go back to Oakley. You graduated from South Summit in the late 80s? In 1980, yeah. Yeah, the fighting class. I'm, I'm trying to think. So 1980. So this was, <laughs> I hate to date myself, but... I think back to the senior swap days, and that was in the late 80s, early 90s, wasn't it? When that yeah. happened. So that was after. Yes. After yeah, you graduated. I, yeah. In fact, my, they lived just a 
three miles down the road and, and it was my church house and steakhouse that got bombed and and wow. my mom had my mom had uh, one of their kids in first grade when they pulled them out of school and so I was quite familiar with with that whole situation well that had to be tra pretty traumatic it would be it, normally for anyone but Oakley yeah. being such a small community it really was and then it, it wasn't something you heard about on the news all the time and or read about so it was really quite uh, quite crazy well, tell me about the youth sports, the opportunities up there. I know years ago when I was coaching girls basketball in the 80s, I used to take my girls team up to, to Juddie's camp. And he would always have, it just seemed there was an endless supply of rye dolches. Like, and, and I can't even keep track of them all. Just one would, would grow up and then and be too old to be camp and graduate from high school. And then there'd be another rye dolch and then another rye dolch and then another rye dolch. Yeah, they were actually, they actually came and lived in Oakley uh, just when I was on my mission, but I got to know the family really well. The, the, the dad is still one of my late dad's greatest friends and, and did so much for my dad and, and just loved Craig and Mark, right? All I, I knew Craig better because Mark was pretty young at the time, but uh, mm -hmm. I always followed both of those as they went through the U and, and everything. And uh Mark, I mean, uh, Craig lives up in Oakley with his wife, who I grew up with also, who is a Wolston Hume, who pretty much uh, half the town was Wolston Humes. And Wolston Humes, yeah. Wade, obviously, used to yeah, be on the Wade executive was, committee. There Wade you go. Was, uh, just two years younger than I, and so I, I could tell you all kinds of stories about him, too. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Let's talk for a moment about some of the mentors you had growing up. I'm sure maybe your parents you want to mention or some of the coaches you had or even some of the teachers you had. You know, I was I was really fortunate. I look at kids that I've taught and that haven't had the same opportunities. And I was really, really fortunate. I had definitely one of my role models was my my father. He he loved the game of basketball and he taught me about basketball. In fact, my mom was a is a saint. Because back then all the the rooms were the roll out tile in the in the house and upstairs my dad uh, right by the living room built me a basket with plywood and a rim and a net and a two before going down into a railroad tie and I just dribbled and shot and played and and uh, that was my whole life I'd watch a a basketball game on TV as a kid and then go play and. And my poor mom had to have been driven crazy hearing that ball bounce all the time. But then my dad coached for a couple of years basketball at Park City. And then he, like I said, he was the first girls coach and, and coached the girls until his heart just wouldn't let him anymore um, with the heart problems that he had. But he taught me so much about loving not just the game, but but loving the process and the lo loving the, the girls or the guys and whoever you were coaching and and I looked at some of those people that he coached and how they would just have stars in their eyes around him and, and, and how kind he was to them. And, and I, I wanted to have that in my life. I, I wanted to make a difference because I saw that in my dad's life. And I was fortunate to have great coaches. I had uh, in basketball, Camp Frazier, who ended up being in the Coaches Hall of Fame. And I had Tom Crittenden, who who won numerous state championships there. And, and, and so I was very fortunate to have those as my role models. And other than my dad, probably my biggest role model was the football coach at the time when I went to Westside, his name was Lyle Henderson. Uh, and just to tell you how important he is to that community, he's still alive and the football field has been named after him for the last 10 years, at least. So he, he's very prominent, but he, he taught me a lot about coaching because, as you know, growing up, uh, coaches would rank, yank your helmet around and, and <laughs> get after you quite a bit. And and, uh, and that wasn't my personality. And I thought, I want to be a coach, but I don't know if I can coach that that way. That's not my personality. And, and Coach Henderson, Lyle Henderson, taught me that you can get the kids totally motivated and still be kind and be respectful and and uh, not that I had ever been abused but he taught he taught me that I can be myself that you can be yourself and still be successful so those were some of my biggest mentors 
Thanks for sharing that. Let's talk for a moment. You've been an athletic administrator for what, at least 15 years now. Yeah, this is my 16th, so, yeah. So talk about how the job of an AD today is different than when you started 15 years ago. Talk about how it's different from 10 years ago and talk about how it's different <laughs> since the pandemic hit. I mean, obviously, Two there's years been, ago. been good and bad and everything. I remember when I first started going through just piles and piles of papers and, and how grateful I was to, to be one of the very first on board with, with Claire and, and Logan, who kind of set up the register my athlete and was one of the first ones to try that out and get rid of some of the paperwork. And, and, but then I, um, my forte definitely wasn't technology and, and trying to grow with the technology was, was, was difficult. But, uh, when I first started, I think, uh, back and I, I had plenty of time to coach and be athletic director and teach health and, and, and try to be very good in the best that I could in, in all of them. And, and things have just grown to the point where uh, there's just no way that, that I can see me being able to, maybe somebody's got a little more uh, organization, organizational skills or time than, than I do, but I just don't see how somebody could do that in, in today's world. I, I, uh, I look at, uh, when I first started and, and I've always been one of those that wanted to learn. I felt if I wasn't growing and learning then I was getting worse. And so I went to the very first year I went to, to the coaches clinic down in St. George and took classes and, and was scared to death with Dr. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Green. Took uh, the 504. Yeah. And, yeah. and on the, I came home and told my wife, I go, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, it, it scared me to death with all the lawsuits that were going on and didn't realize all the responsibility that an athletic director had. I, you know, I, I, I knew that they scheduled games and buses and set up gyms and things like that. And, but I didn't realize all the other, other avenues that an athletic director had the jobs that they had. And, uh, probably the last 10 years, it's changed even more so. And really the last five years, I, I look back to my first three or four or five years, I maybe would have a parent in my office or an email. Of course, the, the texts when I first started, I, did, I remember getting that first flip phone after my first about <laughs> third or fourth year as an athletic director. And so the access wasn't quite as easy, but I'd get one or two or three a year. And now it's it takes up so much of your time. You, just, you get one or two or three in an hour. Yeah, exactly. So, so that just takes up so, so much time. And uh, so the things that, that you really want to do of, of coaching coaches and working with kids is, has uh, kind of diminished and been taken up with a lot of more administrative type duties. Um, but one thing that I, I really feel hasn't changed a lot, and that is, how great kids are you know uh, people all people say all the time what has happened to kids today and, and i just say they're just following their role models and and uh and so i i wish athletic directors had more time to coach their coaches on building relationships and working with kids and being those good role models because our our kids need it more today than ever before Excellent answer. Thanks for sharing that. Let me follow up. When you became the AD in 2007, who did you replace up at Bear River? Hunter Barris. I was going to say, it's, it's, you, it, that's about the time he left. So yeah. I date myself. <laughs> yeah. And before that, it was Dick Green. He, he was the uh -huh. AD here. He was the one that hired me here, actually. And, and uh, then we just honored um, Coach Pete, who was one of the very first athletic directors from here and, and was uh, one of the early athletic directors of the year. And so there's been some good athletic directors here, And but I followed Hunter. Share with us one thing you wish you had known when you started your career that you know now that you wish you had known then. <laughs> oh, I, I, I wish I would have known that it was uh, more than just scheduling. You know, I, I, I wish I would have known that uh, that was the easy part as far as, yeah, it takes time, but honestly, as far as stress and everything else, it's, that's the easy part. And that's the, 
even though it's a necessary evil, it's the least important part of the job that, that the real important part is, 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 is teaching, you know, coaching coaches and, and trying to develop a relationship with kids when you're not coaching them on a regular basis, like you were able to, when you coach them and, and, and try and develop that relationship. So they felt comfortable coming to you with, with problems that they, they were having and, and so that you could get their insight and their honest opinion on things. And, and then I, I, I could have, I wish I would have known how many classes I needed to take in how to deal with, uh, with parents because <laughs> I've had to learn a lot, but. Uh... Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's talk for a minute. You talked about register my athlete. You talked about Claire. I know that when I retired at Jordan, at the end of June of 2013, I believe they rolled out register my athlete in the fall of 2013. So I have, I'm familiar with it. I've never used it. I tell the story and I've told this before of the two filing cabinets that were just off to my right in my office. The top two were for seniors the top bottom two were for juniors. The top two of the next were for sophomores and the bottom two were for freshmen. And just the file you had on each kid. And of course, now those two filing cabinets are non-existent and now you're able to do it online. So I know the Utah people are familiar with it, but anybody who may be listening nationally share about how that's been a game changer for us here in Utah. Oh, it's been unbelievable. It's like you said, I, I had, I wish I would have had uh, talked to you ahead of time because I had a filing cabinet for, for, uh, the year uh, a year uh-huh. and then another year was another filing cabinet because they they always told you to keep them for at least three years and right so three years of, of files and i kind of wish i, I now you mentioned that i wish i would have had one just for juniors and seniors and then just kind of moved them up that way that would have been a smarter way but but uh trying to keep track of that paperwork and kids bring them bring them in at all different times and they're not all filled out so you have to <laughs> send them back and then they lose them and so you got to get them some new ones and and then you, you finally get what you need and you check them off the list and you put them in the file and and uh it just took an amount an immense amount of time and now to be able to just have them do it online and they still turn in their physicals to me but uh and, and they still have a hard time getting all those three pages right. But, but uh, everything else, they just click buttons and, and uh, it, it's just saved so much time and been a great way to communicate with, with parents too, as far as your kid needs this or this is coming up, you know, the tryouts are on this date. So please have them all cleared for tryouts by this date. And, that, and then you don't have to run after a coach or, or call a coach and say, this kid's eligible or this kid's not, that coach can look right on their, their register, my athlete, and see it says cleared for tryout. They can try out. It says they're complete. That means they paid their fees, you know, and, and you don't have to run back and forth between the coaches to let them know who's uh, taken care of and who's not. And so it, it, it has been a real game changer. And it's so very well said. I can remember going to my media person and taking a stack of, stack of paper 500 sheets and having them cut it into fourths and on each fourth it was student's name and it had checks box missing physical missing hazing agreement missing jordan high agreement missing form a missing form b i mean it was and i can just remember back and forth and back and forth so thanks so much for sharing that and i'm sure other there's other software out there for other people in other states, but I know that uh, the ADs are happy here. Let's let's shift gears for a minute, Van, and let's talk about your biggest failure or dig it, biggest disappointment in your life and what you learned from it. Oh man, there's obviously been uh, there's been so many. <laughs> I, I think of probably one of the the biggest ones was was uh, high school was kind of easy for me and. Uh, College, not so much, especially I remember my first uh, semester at Utah State uh, not doing so well. And uh, mainly it was because I spent so much time over at the hyper playing basketball and not so much time <laughs> studying in the classroom. And, and 
And I remember my dad always saying, how's, how's school going? How's school going? My mom, how's school going? Oh, it's going just fine. And then I leave on my mission and they get a letter from the university saying, if I have one more quarter like that, I may not come back. And just uh, <laughs> seeing the discipline once I just in the letters, because we didn't have the, the, t the emails and the videos with back then, but just seeing the, the sadness in my mom and my dad, the disappointment, uh, that was that was really probably a, a life changer for me because I I ever I never wanted to disappoint uh, them again and I also didn't want to disappoint me I wanted to, to say I've given everything I could give uh, every effort I could give whether I was reached my goal or not I was never going to be that person that just did things halfway and so that was a real learning experience for me uh I, I had to go to an extra year of school because of that learning experience mm. and uh and my you know my parents pretty much picked up most of my bill that first quarter at utah state and after that they weren't going to and, and thank goodness they weren't going to because it it uh when when you have to earn uh what you it yourself it's different <laughs> it, it's a lot different and uh and I, I became a better person and a, and a better student and, and, and hopefully a better coach because of that lesson that I learned. I know that you're a CAA, Van. I want you to talk for a minute about the journey that you took to become a CAA and talk about the importance of being certified for those of our listeners who are not. Right. I, I, I remember when Hunter left and, and him training me, he didn't say anything about that. And, and it wasn't emphasized as much as, as it is now. And I'm glad it is emphasized so much now. But I, I like I says, I jumped right into taking classes because I love to learn and, and, uh, and I wanted to be the best that I, I could be. And, and uh, I probably went three or four years because um, I'd been out of college for a long time and I was kind of worried about passing the test honest to be honest with you well I, so I, I think we all were <laughs> so I took the you know I I took quite a few classes before I finally decided okay I'm gonna fill out all the forms and paperwork so that I can take the test and and then I remember uh getting some practice tests and and looking through everything and and really studying really hard and still being really nervous about passing the test. And, and I got, I got to tell you when I, when I got the test and then I passed it, you know, cause even in college, there would be times I think I did really well and I didn't. And so I was worried, even though I felt I had been, that I was prepared, I was really worried. And, and, and it was probably one of the greatest feelings that I'd had for a long time when I got that back saying, saying that, that I had passed the test and, and I was really proud and, and, and my, CAA is hanging on my wall right here in my office and and and, uh, and it's something that I'm really proud of and and something that as I have learned and grown in this job it's something that's so essential um I know Rick Rich Barton has talked a lot about it how just that CAA alone is 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 a insurance policy for the school and how Dr. Green would talk about you know the lawsuits that he had dealt with and if if uh athletic director had been trained in those areas or if a coach had been trained in those areas the court the courts looked a lot more uh what's the word more on, on their side yeah right and, and would look in their favor because they had done all they could to to be trained and i just think in today's world you know, where it's a blame everybody else society going clear back to when that that lawsuit was because somebody got burned from the McDonald's hot chocolate because it didn't say it was too hot. And uh, then you have people suing the bike companies because it didn't say it could be dangerous driving your bike at night. And and, and it's just progressed it and, and gotten worse. And, and I just don't see how an athletic director would dare or how a school district would dare not have their athletic director as soon as possible get certified and then go on to get their CMA. Well, you know, based on the, well, the survey that, that we sent out, Big Rich and I, as you know, have been working with the legislature to try to get that bill passed uh, yes. for an annual stipend. And of course, it's been tabled because 
the school boards and the superintendents uh, decided they didn't think it was such a great idea. But part of the survey that we took of our members, I think there's 46 CAAs or CMAAs active in Utah, but there's 150 athletic director positions. Now, some of those are uh, doubled up. Right. If you know what I mean, like uh -huh. some of the schools in the Granite District have two, but that's clearly that's just barely over one fourth of our people that are certified. And of course, our big point with the legislature was the person in the building that has to certify to the UHSAA and to the State Board of Education that all the coaches are certified doesn't require certification. But that's I guess that's the irony of the situation. Yeah, and, and and it's and it's ignorance, honestly. If before I got into this 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 job, I wouldn't have had a clue what responsibilities uh, an athletic director has in getting those coaches certified, and the difficulty it is to to especially in today's world. But in, anyway, at our school, it gets harder every year to find a teacher in the building that wants to coach because teaching has mm -hmm. become so difficult. And so you're dealing with people that have other ways of making money outside the school and trying to make contact with them. And, and they definitely don't want to do all this certification. And so it's like pulling teeth sometimes. And, and, uh, and but they need to they need to be certified just so that it can keep the school out of lawsuits and, and help them to be better coaches and better mentors. And uh you know, hopefully someday there'll be enough superintendents and, and principals and everything that will understand exactly what it entails and how it is, is saving them in the long run and also how it's helping kids as we're able to pass on information to these coaches so that they can be better coaches to these kids. It's just yeah, you know, I, I in some ways I don't blame them because of that ignorance, but hopefully soon people will realize the uh, the necessity of it, that it's not just something that we want. It's something that is, is needed and critical. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. Let's, let's have you share with our audience your journey. Obviously, you, you became the athletic director in 2007, mm -hmm. and uh, so you became involved with the UI AAA, you started attending conferences. And of course, now you're a member of the athletic director executive committee. So share some thoughts along the way of the importance of being involved in the state association and nationally and, and the benefit has been for you. You know, there, there's been so many benefits, probably for me, the biggest benefit is as an athletic director, the only time people know that you're, working is when you mess up they, they don't know it. and then you're you be you gain more enemies and and to have that camaraderie with all the other athletic directors that understand what you're going through and 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 going to those conferences and talking to them and see that they have the same issues that you do that you're not alone that you're not all by yourself and, and that there's a lot of people that understand you and and uh I, I just feel like that's been a great benefit for my mental health and, and, and dealing with the anxiety of this job is just knowing that there's people I can call if I need some, some answers, if I'm not sure on something. And, to, and, and sometimes it's just as simple as calling a fellow athletic director and just cry in the blues and, and have somebody listen to you that knows what you're going through. And, and obviously you, you have your, your spouse that you can talk to, but, but they, you don't want to burden them all the time. And, and uh, so it's a great opportunity to be a, a part of an organization as strong as ours is where you can talk, you can grow a, a friendship with more and more people each year as you're in this profession and, and then to be on the ADAC committee and see the intricacies that are going on and, and, and how things happen and how you get things changed is, has been a real eye opener for me. Um, but it, it, you know, I, I know there every, every organization has their, 
there are groups and you can belong to, but I, I know that I would not survive had I not been a member of the UI AAA and gained not only the knowledge of being in that organization, but the friendships and, and having people that I can talk to and learn from and, and like I say, cry the blues to. Thanks for sharing that. What's one common myth about being an athletic administrator that you would like to debunk? Mm. <laughs> and I'm sure this is a common one with most ADs is that the important stuff people will never see. And, uh, you know, it was, it was that way with coaching. I remember it's all about the process. I remember when I first started coaching, my wife would always be happy when we won because she knew that weekend I was going to be happy. And if we lost, I was going to be miserable that weekend until I learned that the process was what, what's most important. And, and young athletic directors have to realize you're going to make mistakes. Give yourself some grace and and but have a philosophy things that you feel strongly about and, and stick to them and they might change as, as you learn but but it's not just about paperwork it's not just about setting up gyms those are the time consuming but they're the least important it's it's all about learning how to to develop relationships with your coaches and with your parents and your community and and, and the students and and uh that that's that's where it's all that's where all the time and stress and and honestly the gratification comes from it's so very well said i think if i'm hearing you right which i'm sure i am even at my advanced age that you know find find the joy in the journey the joy is not yeah. necessarily the destination but you've got to have fun along the way with the people that are there and with the kids that are there so Thanks yes. so much for sharing that. So let's have you share with our audience. What's the favorite part of your job? Oh, it's, it, I guess there's two parts. One is the kids. I, I still love to go to, a, there's nothing like going to a high school game. I, I go to Utah state games all the time or watch others on TV. There's just nothing like the energy that kids bring and the love that, and excitement and that they bring and uh, and to see kids lives change because of the activities that they're in is still so rewarding to me e even though I'm more in the background just observing now but uh, that that's probably one of my favorites and, and, and then the other is just to see something come together like when when they uh, when lacrosse became sanctioned and when girls wrestling came sanctioned and I would go before the board to because we had a lot of interest and in, in, especially with our girls wrestling that first wondering if we would even have be able to have it and then to have 15 girls the first year and then this year we had over 30 and the success that they've had and to see the excitement in those girls eyes that wouldn't have had a chance to to do that has been so rewarding, but so just like you say, to just see the journey of different, different things and, and know that even though I was a small part of that, that I was still a part of that. And I can look back years from now and say, yeah, I, I remember standing before the board with a coach uh, saying the, why we wanted girls wrestling at, at Bear River High School and and know that you're a small part of that change is, has been so rewarding. Let's talk for a minute about your principal. I know this isn't on the sheet that I sent you, but you and I share a, a, a common uh, friend, let's say. It's yes. because AJ grew up across the street from me. He was like, he was part of my young men's and, and to, uh, to have him be the principal of Bear River is a, I'm giving a shout out to AJ. Just give you a, a, a moment to talk about what a great kid. Well, I can't see what a great kid he is. He's your principal now. He's all grown up. No, I, I, I joke with him all the time. That he's just a couple of years older than my oldest daughter. And, but uh, I've learned a ton from him and, and his enthusiasm and his, his willingness to, to, to look at what's best for kids, even if it, goes against tradition sometimes and seeing him make the hard decisions and, and, and realizing there's no way I'd ever want to be a principal. And, but he has been so supportive and uh, you know, he grew up loving 
basketball and other sports and 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 he he coached uh for some years and so he understands that aspect of it and and it, it has just been real fun to have him he you know he's honestly the one that fought so that I could be full-time AD because I was the very last one in our region anyway that was that still taught and was an athletic mm -hmm. director and he fought hard for for me to to just be an athletic director and I'll you know I'll go to my grave extremely grateful I remember when he told me that was going to be the case I actually got tears in my eyes and so he'll always have a close close spot in my heart excellent let's finish up with a couple of questions the first being man if you had two pieces of advice for a beginning athletic administrator and your advice would you have to do these two things in order to be successful as an athletic administrator what would those two things be one would be a, a probably attention to detail. You, you have to be detail oriented. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to do this and, and assume that it's going to get done every time. And you have to, sometimes you have to check and recheck yourself because again, people aren't going to notice unless you mess up. And if you mess up, it's usually something pretty big. If a game's going to start and you don't have officials or you don't have a bus or, <laughs> or some uh, kid is, didn't make, didn't get through the transfer process and, and your team and your school, your team has to forfeit games or things like that. You really have to be attention to the detail. And uh, the other big advice would be, be something that do as I say, not as I do. And that's be learn to be a good delegator because you can't do everything on your own. And uh, <laughs> my wife tells me it's my own fault. Once you start doing something, uh, then the coaches or parents or whoever's going to expect you to keep doing it. And then something else pops up in your job and then pretty soon you don't have enough hours in the day to do it all. So it learned that you got to trust people too. You, you got to train your coaches that they got to take some responsibility and, and then trust them that they will, that they're adults. And, and if they make a mistake, then you call them on it and, and they'll learn. That's probably been the hardest thing for me is not to just say, okay, it's easier for me to just do it myself than to try and train somebody to do it and, and watch them make a mistake and then have to go and pick it up afterwards. But you have to, you have to train other people and, and learn to delegate. Van, what's the one question that I failed to ask you that I should have asked you? Oh, oh man. I, I don't know. You did such a great job. Hutch. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, you know, this probably the only thing I didn't bring up that, was was my family that, that as an athletic director you have to have a supportive wife and you have to have supportive family and i am absolutely very grateful for for my supportive wife and my children and and then now my grandchildren which mean everything to me and 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 i know they do to you as i've as i followed you with your children going through corner canyon and and your grandchildren and and uh and so make sure athletic directors that you you give time to your family too and that you always let them know how much you appreciate because they do a lot of sacrifices so you can never be home thanks man that wraps it up for another edition of the ui AAA connection once again our guest today has been van park certified athletic administrator athletic director at bear river high school thanks for being on the show van thank you so much Hunter. for our listeners we hope you join us again next week for another edition of the UI AAA Connection.